you know, the defining challenge of my life has been my daughter's illness. Um, my daughter was um, catastrophically ill from age 11 to age 16. Um, extremely rare disease. Rare diseases are a particular challenge because insurance doesn't cover treatments. Many doctors don't really know what to do because they're not familiar with it. There's not enough body of research because, you know, we live in a capitalist society where we, we research illnesses that there's a, a money pot at the end of the, the rainbow and there's no money pot at the end of a rare disease. So um, it was extremely challenging navigating that um, that scene, that episode of her life. And um, she was ultimately wheelchair bound and she's totally fine now. You would never know that anything had ever happened, but it was incredibly difficult. And, and, and really um, what, when you say the importance, you talk so much about the importance of like grit and resilience and commitment to the bigger goal. I, I got to, a chance to see that up close and personal because, you know, her disease is the most painful disease on record. Right. And, um, Hey everybody, I'm back with another episode of Soul Success Stories. And today I have a special treat because I'm talking to my friend, my buddy, my fellow speaker, my mastermind partner, Denise Hamilton. And Denise has a lot of titles. She does a lot of incredible things. But most recently, and what I'm most excited about right now, is she is the author of an incredible book called Indivisible. Indivisible. And I was reading this book last night. <laughs> and it is so good and it's so appropriate especially for the time we're in right now, right now. So I look forward to talking a little bit more about that and mostly about Denise and her story. So Denise, tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, thank you so much for having me. I'm thrilled to be here. I love this platform and the way you touch people's lives. It's just, it's just amazing. Um, okay, a little bit about me. I am complicated. I have done a lot of different things in my life, which is what I always encourage people to try. When people bring something to you, say yes, just say yes. You know, you can do so much more than you think you are capable of. So I um, have, I'm one of those weird people that has lived in multiple cities all over the country. I'm born in Jamaica, grew up in New York, um, went to college in Texas, have lived in LA, have lived in um, South Florida, um, have lived in Abilene, Texas. Like I just kind of had all of these different experiences and they have really helped me to understand people and to understand the differences that we have and figure out how to navigate those differences successfully. Um, and kind of like the stories that we tell ourselves about who we are and what we're capable of and who other people are, you know, what, what are those people like, you know? Um, and so I, uh, am just really thrilled to be able to go around the world and speak to audiences and to do consulting work with audiences, um, with organizations around, um, how to make work better, how to connect to each other better, and how to create the realities in your life that you actually want to see happen. I love it, Denise. And I'm thinking about when we first met in 2019 at Influence. Um, and we were sitting at, we ended up randomly sitting at a table together. And you said some things that I'm like, this woman <laughs> has a way with words. It has a way with breaking down complex scenarios and complex situations so that people can understand them. And that's exactly what you've done. And so even before we get into the, the questions about the interview, I would love for you to talk about Indivisible and why you wrote it and what you hope to accomplish with it. And, and yeah, just share some more about Indivisible. Well, I have, I have one daughter, but Indivisible is my, is my other daughter. It's my other. <laughs> um, you know, I, I'm an observer. I'm a watcher. I watch people. I watch how they interact with each other. I watch the choices that they make. And I was disappointed with what I was seeing about how we were growing 
together, like what it meant to be um, in community, what that looked like, how we were tackling the problems that face us. It didn't feel like it was going well. And um, I fortunately have been in a lot of situations where I get to talk to all kinds of different people. And I realized how unique I was in that position. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to write down some of the thoughts, some of the stories, some of the observations that I have seen actually change behavior, actually impact culture, actually make things better. Um, I think we tend to talk about inclusion and issues around inclusion and workplace culture. We talk about them through platitudes, right? We don't, we don't get real, right? It's one thing to say, hey, I want to lose 10 pounds. It's another thing entirely to go into your cabinet and throw out all the Oreos and the Doritos. That's a different step. Right. You like like and we kind of talk about them like they're all one big step. And it's really not. It's not the um, difficulty of a goal that stops us from accomplishing it. It's the ease of a lesser goal. And so what I really try to talk about in the book is what's the lesser goal? What are the things that are getting in our way that are stopping us from actually doing the things we say we want to do. If you don't get rid of that stuff, it, you're never going to reach the goals that you And well, I know you know about that. I do. I do. But girl, I was reading the book and I there was so I read with the notepad beside me. Anyway, <laughs> a pen and paper, I do and I take so many notes. I'm like, "Ooh, ooh, ooh." And I said, you know what? I got to change my method with this book. And I, I got a highlighter and I just started highlighting. It's like, I can never get through the book if I'm just right. Because it's so there's so many things. And again, just like that example you just gave, so many examples. But I think in the world that we live in right now, and it is so divisive. It is so divisive. Even people who didn't even feel like they would be so divisive or divided mm -hmm. are divided right now and mm -hmm. so I just really wanted to talk about the book and I encourage everybody watching this to get it no matter how you feel if you're like oh I'm good I, I'm inclusive and I understand mm -mm. not it's in one of the myths right one of the myths yep. is it's other people that need to change. It's not me. Exactly. And that's one of the things about the book. The book talks about how you need to change. It's not really, you, you're not in control of the world. You're in control of you. So what actually needs to happen differently for this really to move? And it's really, it starts with you. It's not yeah. really about everyone else. I'm telling you, it's powerful. It is really, really powerful. Um, and I do, in order for the world to be better, we all have to take an individual stance and an individual look at ourselves and how we see the world and how we see other people. And this book really does help you do that. So it's awesome. It's awesome. All right, let's get into this because <laughs> I love sharing stories. I love sharing stories. And Denise, I have been, I feel honored and blessed to have been part of your story and learning your story um, for the last now five years, now five years. So in this program, I have what I call the So What Success System. It's my belief that anyone, absolutely anyone, can achieve success if they learn how to overcome obstacles, eliminate excuses, and calculate choices. Mm -hmm. They can have so what success, and that is success no matter what happens in life. And Denise, I know you are a so what success woman. I have witnessed a lot of the, the, the bumps and the bruises, and, and I know a lot of your backstory, and, and I see your smile, and I know the success you're having in your life right now. But um, so you're so a success woman. But first, talk to us a little about a little bit about some of the obstacles that you've had to overcome and just how you've done it to get to where you are today. Well, um, you're sweet. Thank you so much for saying that. Um, I, you know, the defining challenge of my life has been my daughter's illness. Um, my daughter was um, catastrophically ill from age 11 to age 16. Um, extremely rare disease. Rare diseases are a particular challenge because insurance doesn't cover treatments. Many doctors don't really know what to do because they're not familiar with it. There's not enough body of research because you know we live in a capitalist society where we, we research illnesses that there's a, a money pot at the end of the, the rainbow and there's no money pot at the end of a rare disease. So um, it was extremely challenging 
navigating that um, that scene, that episode of her life. And um, she was ultimately wheelchair bound and she's totally fine now. You would never know that anything had ever happened, but it was incredibly difficult. And, and, and really um, what, when you say the importance, you talk so much about the importance of like grit and resilience and commitment to the bigger goal. I, I got to, a chance to see that up close and personal because, you know, her disease is the most painful disease on record. Right. And, um, and she was on a, a lot of really strong medication and I had family members and friends come to me and say, well, don't make her go to school. It's too hard for her to concentrate. You know, she's probably going to be in a wheelchair the rest of her life. Like give her the cookies, give her, just let her have the cupcakes. You know, people, people kept sending cupcakes and cookies and sugar, like, like candy, like, and, and I, and I was so struck by how committed people were, how easily resigned they were to the worst possible outcome. And it it really took a lot of courage on my part to stand up. You know, it's it's one thing to stand up to bullies and mean people. It's something else to mm. stand up to your friends, right? And the people that love you and say, hmm, no, we're going to keep going. She's going to do. And not only did she graduate on time, she graduated number three in her class. Yes, David. Um, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, so that what that says to me is like, you have to be so careful um, of surrendering your vision of what's possible to people who do not share or don't have access to that vision. Right. And so how important it is to put people around you that are supporters of the dream, amplifiers of the dream um, in a way other people's love can be a cage yeah. if you're not careful, because she'd still be sitting in, she'll be laying in bed right now if I listen to them. Right. Like that's, that's just the truth of it. And, and yeah. it's so interesting you know, it was very, very hard. I was at the time of the word, the peak of her illness when she was the worst. Um, I was a commercial real estate broker, which meant I didn't have a salary. I worked on full commission. I ate what I killed. And now I have this catastrophically ill child and I, I can't work. And I have like one paycheck and I have this um, insurance structure that doesn't really help with payment. And there are so many junctures that I could have said, oh, I can't afford it, or oh, I can't figure it out, or oh, I can't go. And I remember my my brother, my younger brother had come down to help me get her in and out of the wheelchair and manage her because literally I was single mom and I wasn't really up up for all of it. I didn't know how to do how to manage it. And he turned to me at one point and he said, How much does it cost to walk? And I was like, say less. And we literally like figured it and we just figured it out. And to this day, it feels, it feels like literally supernatural to me. It feels like Jesus with the fish and the loaves. Like, how did you take this little something and get through this incredibly, ta incredibly taxing, challenging experience on the other side with a positive result? I don't know. Like, I, I really, I just don't know. And the the thing that it tells me is just keep moving in the direction of your goal. Like you can work it out if you choose to believe. And I didn't say if you believe, I said, if you choose, because yeah. it is 100% a choice, you know, and, and to this day, I'll have people call me that, you know, their child, they just got this diagnosis and somebody referred them to me and they're like, well, I don't know how I'm going to pay for it. And I, and I tell them, sell your couch sell plasma, go in the house and start cooking uh, uh, plates. So you get whatever you have to do to get this treatment, to get on the other side, is, just do it. And I'm heartbroken sometimes to hear how people talk themselves out of a possibility. Our lives give us evidence of what's possible. And it's so strange how we always choose to look at the worst evidence right? Like yeah. we don't look at, so, so somebody right now is a single mom and everybody's telling them they got to drop out of school. They're not going to make it. And they have a choice. They can look at you or they can look at the stories and the successes that, you know, the, the, the problems that people tell them, or they can look at actual evidence 
of what's possible. And I'm, and I'm always struck by why we don't choose to believe if one person can do it, mm -hmm. so can you. So yeah. Girl, so that just, that, so you said so many things <laughs> in that. But one thing that really stuck out is I remember when I first started speaking, um, didn't know what I was doing, but I was on the stage and I was speaking. I said it because I meant it. Success is a choice. Yeah. Period. Success is a choice. And 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 I'm listening to you. And and now that I know Jason, and I, of course, when I met her, I had no idea about this backstory. And I never, ever would have. Because just like you said, you can't tell. You cannot tell. But I love this story in that is a testament to not only her strength, and resilience but yours but yours and and the power of choice and the power of just making a decision that I am going to be okay my child is going to walk again and not only is she walk and talk about look I, we gotta go there because she's swimming with the sharks and she's doing she is doing amazing she's a, bit of a daredevil she's a bit of a daredevil she's gonna she jump is. off cliff and go to Iceland and get on the glaciers and I I even have had family members come to me and say oh Javen is doing too much she oh, don't you worry is it aren't you scared I said honey Javen has faced she has faced the, the worst challenge that any of us can imagine. And she's come out on the other side. Like, I trust Javen. Javen knows the possibility of life. She knows the challenge and she knows the possibility. And she chooses the possibility every single day. And, and I, I, I love that for her. I love it too. I love seeing it. And as you're saying that, it made me, you know, it takes me back to my story because I was a teen mom, as you know, and I got pregnant as a result of a forced sexual encounter. So everybody felt sorry for me. Mm. People felt sorry for me and it was justified, right? I felt sorry for me, but then I'm like, okay, where is feeling sorry for me going to get me? And just like you said, Javen could be just laying in a bed still or in a wow. wheelchair still. I could just still be at home waiting on a check. <laughs> and I made a choice just like you made a choice and Javen made a choice. And I think that's powerful. This says so much. Okay. The second part of the solo success system is eliminating excuses. And mm -hmm. so you just gave a powerful story where several excuses could have been made for you or for Javen, uh, for your daughter. But talk about some of the excuses that you've had to eliminate throughout your personal and professional life to get to where you are today. Ooh, the biggest one is they won't let me. <laughs> they won't let me the big the the amorphous they they won't let me they they don't want me in here they they don't like people like me in this space and you know they 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 and it's like I'm free honey I had to put that ex I just put that excuse to the side I've been the first or the only black person or woman in almost every job I've ever had almost everyone and um you know, somebody has to be the first. So there can be a second and a third and a fourth and a fifth and a sixth. There is no place that you don't belong. You belong wherever your gifts and your genius take you. And so the idea that you would talk yourself out of what you're supposed to do. I mean, I'm not fighting me. I'm I'm trying to challenge, fight the challenges <laughs> of the world, but it's amazing how people will talk themselves out of their belonging in a space, right? And and it doesn't mean there aren't challenges in these spaces. Doesn't mean that sometimes people will be unkind or whatever, but I'm not gonna miss out on wonderful things because you don't like me. Are you in because you don't like me? I don't even know you. I don't even like you. So why would, <laughs> why would I let you decide, let anyone else decide where I belong? and what I am capable of, like, and I, and I get the pain. There's a, I, I've been trying to find a word. I've been thinking about it for like probably a year. I've been trying to find a word that captures the, um, the, the predatory unanticipated nature of racism and sexism, right? The fact that you'll just be on a lovely afternoon, walking around the furniture store, just looking at furniture and you see the clerk look over your head to talk to the white people and greet them and offer them a glass of champagne or I, I offer to show them to the so and act like you are invisible. So you walked into that space in a great mood and you are having an awesome day. And then somebody just does one little thing that just 
chips away at your happiness. Mm -hmm. And and it's a very hard thing. I wish there was a word to describe it. I'm on the hunt for the word. I'm on the hunt with you now because I've been there. I felt it. I know. Yes, exactly. and, it, and it changes you. You know, what it does is it makes you not go in that furniture store anymore, right? It makes you not go to that, to apply for that job again or to not, think you belong at that country club they don't they don't have anybody like me at that country club. like it changes you in a way that is imperceptible and if you have that happen all the time it's very easy to talk yourself out of places right so that excuse is is not without you know a logical backing I understand right, it, right. but you have to overcome that you have to say I am free there is no place that I do not belong. I belong anywhere my gifts can take me. And I think I'm old enough to remember um, Surya Bonnelly, the Olympic ice skater, the black Olympic ice skater, who is the only woman to ever do, actually she's the only person, not even just woman, mm -hmm. do a backflip and land on one leg on the ice in, in skating history. And she was so mistreated she was so mistreated um and now I look at Simone Biles and I look at um Coco I look at um uh Gabby I look at all of these athletes Serena and Venus and, and I'm like you know thank God she had the courage to go someplace that people told her she didn't belong because mm -hmm. this book opens up the space for everyone else to say wait a minute can I do that too and that's what we need. Aren't we glad that Thurgood Marshall went someplace that people think thought he didn't belong? I, I am. I'm so glad. <laughs> Girl. <laughs> well, so I think this idea that, you know, they don't want me there or I don't feel I won't feel comfortable in that space because they're going to mistreat me. I just I just reject that. And if you can free yourself from that. Whew, you are free indeed. You know, what just came to my mind is when you, when, cause I'm big on when a negative thought comes, what is the positive that you should replace it with immediately? What just came to my mind, my mind is when you get the excuse, they won't let me immediately think they can't stop me. Right. They can't stop me. So whenever that feeling comes, that's how I have felt over my journey too, is they can't stop me. I might feel they won't let me, but I immediately replace it with that thought. They can't stop me. That's good, Denise. That's good. All right. So the third part of the solo success system is calculate choices. So you've made some calculated choices throughout your journey from all the different professions that you've had, um, the different the different aspects of your life, personally and professionally. Talk about some of the calculated choices that you've had to make to get to where you are is this best-selling author of amazing book but seriously changing so many lives with your words mm -hmm. you've made a lot of choices along the way talk about some of those choices well I think I always um bet on me mm -hmm. I always you know I I take the time to know myself I don't think a lot of people know themselves and and a homework assignment I'll give to everyone listening is can you write down on a piece of paper what your gifts are have you ever taken the time to name them to list them out and be specific and and I think even how we think about gifts is kind of challenging today it doesn't have to be a monetizable gift just do you have the gift of encouragement right I, I, there's friends that that always send you a card every birthday and never miss it like do you have the gift of consistency right? It's great if you can sing, if you can write, if you can lead, if you can like write all those things down too, but know yourself. Where are the places that you shine and where are the places you don't shine? And I think that there's a real, you have to be so careful and make a conscious choice. This society tells you to be perfect. You got to bring home the bacon, fry it up in the pan. You got to do all of the things, right? You got to be a good cook, a good homemaker. Good, You have to do all of the things. You're not going to be good at everything. If, if nobody ever told you, I'm here to tell you, you're not going to be good at everything. And I would say beyond that, the, the way we have been socialized to fix and focus on our weaknesses is 
literally sabotaging our gifts. Mm -hmm. Energy is finite. You only have so many hours a day. I can spend all my energy trying to be more organized or I can write a book <laughs> or I can get on stage and speak to me. I can do the things that I'm gifted at and I can hire someone that is gifted in their space and let them shine in their way. And as a team, we can change the world. But instead we get these constant messages that you need to fix everything that's wrong with you. And, you know, so, so with me, I used to have, um, uh, a, a coworker, she came in my office one day and she didn't even say anything to me. She just walked to my bookshelf and she started taking books off of the shelf and putting them in a box. And I was like, what, what, what are you doing? And she said, um, I'm taking these books out. What are the books? Taming the Paper Tiger, uh, Office, the clutter, the clutter Cure, Organization for Dummies. Like she, had, she just pulled every book like that and put it in a box and took it out. And she said, you are so incredibly gifted. You will never change the world by taking your weaknesses to mediocre. But my God, if you invest that same energy in your strengths, you will be unstoppable. And I never forgot that, right? It's a choice. I choose to bet on me. I choose to trust that God created me. He gave me my gifts to do my work. There's nothing inadequate about me if I can't make the perfect souffle. There's nothing inadequate about me if I'm not, you know, the perfect homemaker organized and whatever. Like there's a point where your weaknesses can cannibalize your gifts and you don't want to let it do that. But the truth is you've been given this amazing, amazing set of gifts to do your work. Do not choose to listen to the world telling you what you got to fix about you yeah. feed your genius have the courage to feed what you are good at and you will be unstoppable unstoppable like you <laughs> i think that's powerful i think that's powerful because not only do we do that focus on our weaknesses and think of all these things that are wrong with us that we need to make better but we compare ourselves to other people right who have different gifts and different talents and we're not supposed to have there. I love it. I love it. Well, Denise, I have another question I want to ask you um, because I know you because you're a speaker and we met at a speaking conference. Talk about your journey to, to leaving the career that you had before to, to becoming a professional speaker where you are using that the strengths and that genius that your coworker pointed out to you. Um, to to change the world, to literally change the world. Talk about your that journey a little bit. Literally, because I had been the first or the only woman or black person in all these roles, people started asking me, how are you doing this? Like I could have had lunch 10 times a day. I could have had 17 coffees a day because everybody wanted to kind of take me to lunch and pick my brain and ask me what I was doing differently. So that's really how I started speaking. I started getting invited to speak at conferences specifically to women at that point um, to talk about what I was doing, how I think differently than how they think and why I was getting different results than they were getting. Um, and from that, really, really rewarding, really positive. But I all then kind of got convicted myself mm -hmm. because I was like, you know, I'm telling these women, I'm coming into this organization. I'm telling these women they can do anything. Here's all the stuff that they can do and really kind of challenging them. Hey, in a way, here's all the things you are doing wrong. Right. I had been in corporate for over 25 years before I started um, my business. And so I, I there was this right, wrong kind of framework that I had of like, here's what you need to do. You know, we tell women to have executive presence and use their power pose and make sure you're speaking quickly. And don't put a question mark at the end of your. We have all these tips of what women need to do differently. And honestly, I got convicted about that. So I was going into these organizations where, you know, the staff would be 73, 78% women and the leadership team was 15 men. And I was like, huh. So I started to ask myself like, hey, I want to speak to the leaders of the company before I come in and speak to all the women in their organization. Because I want to make sure what I'm telling them is true. Do these women have a path to leadership? Do they in fact have a route that they can take? Um, let's talk about that. And that I got a reputation for being able to have these conversations with 
leaders, executive teams and organizations, because I come out of the C-suite. So I understood the business needs, the fiduciary responsibility, the, the you know, the life and the, the goals of the business. But I also understood the people. So businesses started referring me to organization, to organization, to organization. And that's really how I started speaking and consulting at the level that I do now is just being um effective, finding a pain point and going in and being of use to people who wanted it to be better, who wanted it to be different. Everybody doesn't want to be different. Right. Right. Okay. Like, and so I, I don't go to clan rallies trying to recruit and convert. Right. Like, but I definitely want to create a space and I very intentionally try to create a space that if you want to do something different, I'm going to try to help you find the path to do that different thing. Right. And figure out what it is and what you're prepared to do at this point or three years from now or five years from now and create a path for that. So literally, that's how my business has been um, constructed and has developed. It's largely been word of mouth. And now that I, I've written a book, I, I'm kind of like ready for prime time in a sense. It's, it's really funny because I'm, I'm really <laughs> the same. I'm the same amount of smart I was three years ago, but I don't know. Um, but I think it's really, it's it's really powerful. Uh, I'm so glad I, we have a, a shared dear friend, Crystal Washington, who pulled me to the side and was like, hey, are you charging for this? Are you setting this up as a business? Because at first I was just like, oh, I'm ha oh, they invited me. I'm so lucky. And she's like, no, you're providing value. And, and I love that. I love that when you have people in your life that will encourage you to value your gifts right? Really encourage you to yep. value your gifts and really encourage you to, um, to see the importance and the significance of what you bring to the table. That's not always the case, right? right? So, so grateful for her. And now I'm, I'm a really, um, I'm enjoying an incredible speaking career and consulting career. And sometimes I pinch myself. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm going to Jamaica next week. I'm going to Bermuda later this year. I just came back from Aspen. I'm going to Kenya. Um, <laughs> going to Kenya. I'm going, it's just, it's all over the place. It's just incredible. And I'm just so grateful and so blessed. So I think about the conversation we had last night. We were like, I, I can't believe this is where I'm at. You know, 10 years ago, especially 15, 20 years ago, never would have imagined. Yeah. And and I shared the same sentiments, right? So I'm thinking about you and I'm thinking about the journey and you have definitely demonstrated you know how to overcome obstacles, eliminate excuses and calculate choices to be a so a success woman, to have gone through the, the most, <laughs> some very, very challenging things personally. And then even, you know, as a mom mm -hmm. to see your daughter, hurting and going through so much pain and what that does to you. You've been through, through some tremendous things and you have achieved so much success. But Denise, what is your personal definition of success? Oh, contentment, safety, joy. Uh, I think you can be a successful school teacher making 50 grand a year. And I think you can be an unsuccessful billionaire because you're miserable and you have terrible relationships and 10 baby mamas. And like, like I, I, think, <laughs> I, I think you have a choice, right? You, you, it's not about how much you make. It's not about, it's about your level of contentment, your level of um, your, your capacity to love and be kind, right? Success is getting enough rest. I, I really, as I've gotten older, I'm really sensitive to that. I see people who are walking around and they're, they're unkind and they're unkind because they're exhausted. They walk through the world at 98% capacity. And I don't think we value rest as much as we do. We're not computers. And there's this like desperation to keep up with, you know, the pace that computers are setting we can only do so much at a time. Um, when I was writing a book, I had um, a, a deadline that I set for myself, and I was really like, "I got to get this done." And and I had a and I I was stumped. I was blocked a little bit. I was talking to my friend um, Joy Ball, Joy um, and Joan Ball. I'm sorry. I was talking to my friend Joan Ball, and um, she said something so powerful. She said, "Ideas are like fruit on a tree." You can't pick it till it's ready. 
And, and it was so relaxed. And if you know, Joan, her voice is very calming. Mm. She's like, this. and, and it was so freeing because the idea is just not ready. You're not broken. There's nothing wrong with you. You're not a failure. You're not a loser. The idea is just not ready yet. Give it a little while and it'll be ready. And you need rest to have good ideas. You need to give your mind space to like percolate and churn and come up with great stuff. And we don't give ourselves that space. So to me, if you have the time and space to rest, if you are content with what you do, if you are operating in your giftedness, you know, that there's something painful about spending all day doing a job outside of your giftedness. That is a nightmare to me, no matter how much money you make. Right. A lot of friends who are lawyers who are absolutely miserable because this is not what they want to be doing all day, but this is the job that paid a lot of money. So that's where they went. And it's like, I, I don't know that that counts as success to me. Um, and that you, you know, it's freedom. You've heard me use that word a lot in this conversation. Like, I just believe in freedom. I want to do what I want to do when I want to do it, how I want to do it with who I want to do it with. Yeah. Like, like that's just, that to me is success. I love it. I love it. Okay, Denise. Um, you are, so you are so full of, of wisdom and knowledge and insight. And, um, you shared a lot in this interview lot more in that book so hopefully people will get indivisible but what's one last piece of of um insight or information or encouragement that you would give to someone watching this who wants to be successful however they define it but they feel like they have obstacles don't let anybody talk you out of your power uh, my personal muse is harriet tubman um and I think about this enslaved woman in the 1800s, couldn't read, couldn't write, didn't have a map, had never been more than a mile from the plantation, had a seizure disorder from being brutalized as a child, was alone, didn't have a horse. How was she gonna get food? I, like I think of all the reasons that she should not have been able to run alone from the South to the North for her freedom, right? And she could have stopped right there and the story would have been phenomenal. My girl turned around and went back. What? Summer, I don't know if I would have gone back. Uh, right. Uh, the courage to say, these conditions are crazy. It's dangerous. They're going to hunt me. If they catch me, they're going to kill me. Like these conditions are horrible I'm gonna do it anyway and she didn't do it once she didn't do it twice she doing she she did it over a period of years and she also didn't do big splashes it wasn't a thousand people at a time it was three this time seven that time five that time right do do we have less resources than Harriet Tubman had in the 1800s do they have less money? less information, less access. We don't have less of anything, but courage, commitment, consistency, sometimes character. So the advice that I have for us is even in this social media world where we're force fed so much negativity and what can work and the sky's falling and we're not gonna be able to figure it out, you have to have the courage to believe in your power and your capabilities to impact the world, to create some different experience. If you don't believe it, it won't happen. But don't ever let the world convince you of what you can't do. Here's a story of somebody who didn't have a, a one thousandth of what you have. And look at what she was able to do over the course of her life. Um, it said that she saved about 70 people this way. My, my, my Lord, if you just touch 70 people that powerfully in the course of your whole entire life, I just know the pearly gates. They don't even, you don't even have to go through the checklist. They just open up when you get there. Come on in, sis. Cause we will, we waiting on you. Right? <laughs> so I just want 
I, I desperately want people to just guard, guard your genius. Do not let anyone talk you out of what is possible for you. Don't let them steal your capability and your promise. Like make sure you believe in you. You can't expect other people to if you don't. So um, yeah, that that's my last piece of advice. And that's don't a powerful one. <laughs> And that's powerful, Denise. Yeah, so many thoughts and so many feelings. I love it. I love it. That was encouragement for me. Even though I'm encouraged and I feel great. Um, that was that was powerful. And somebody is gonna be blessed by not just somebody, several people are gonna be blessed by that. And so many lives are gonna be be changed. Be changed. Denise, I am grateful for that encounter we had in 2019 at Influence. I'm looking forward to spending influence with you again. And I'm just super, super honored. And I mean this from the bottom of my heart. Very, very honored um, to be able to call you my friend. I'm honored that I get to talk to you every single week. <laughs> You're consistent. <laughs> we are consistent every single week to talk to you about life and our businesses and um, and continue to have this impact on the world. Denise, thank you. All the best to you. Everybody go get Indivisible indivisible by denise hamilton this book will change your life and it is what the world needs right right now thank you denise i love you i love you and i'll see you soon <laughs>